There have been many good and many not so good metas over the course of Fortnite competitive's history, but what is the perfect meta? There are three main components to a good meta in my opinion. Balance, competitiveness, and of course, fun. Here's a list of the categories that we're going to be looking through, so let's just dive straight into the first one. Now, which rifles are available is always of key importance in any meta. And I think there's three that are my personal favorites, and they all have their individual roles, which they would fit within the meta. Firstly, the regular assault rifle. Pretty standard. You can't have a meta without this. Let's be real. It is just the baseline of any form of AR that you're going to have in basically any meta. Next, I would have the infantry rifle. That fills up that long range rifle slot. However, it's very disadvantaged when you have it in a box situation. So just having an infantry rifle, you're definitely at some form of disadvantage, in particular if you're just playing solos. And the final one I would have would be the tactical assault rifle. Now, this hasn't been in the meta for a long, long time, but it's been a personal favorite of mine in terms of the balance because it uses mini ammo instead of large ammo. So for trios, which is obviously we've been playing for a long time, there's an interesting trade-off here where there's less damage. However, there's a higher skill gap to the weapon in terms of the fact that it's not really a bloom weapon, but also just does less damage. So all three of these ARs are low bloom ARs as well, which I think is really, really important, which means they're the highest skill AR rifles that are in the game. So they're going to really reward the better players to use these. However, at the same time, they're all balanced in their own way because they have their own roles within a team. So that's for long range. What about close range? The shotguns. This is always up for discussion, but I have a meta that has always been a personal favorite to me. In Chapter 2, Season 4, at the start, for a couple weeks, there was only pump shotguns and charge shotguns available within the game. They later on added tactical shotguns to that as well, which I didn't actually like. I didn't think that was the right change. But the balance between pump and charge has always been really interesting to me. Now, a lot of people don't like the charge shotgun because it's clunky. However, when it's balanced against the pump, I think this fits perfectly. The pump is faster and has a little bit less range. However, you can make a lot easier aggressive box fighting plays with the pump. When it comes to the charge, yes, you can do a little bit more damage defensively, but at the same time, it's a little bit more clunky and it has a little bit more range. That charge will do a little bit more top end damage if you're holding it fully charged, but there's the trade off because you have to spend the time and that pump is fast and you can do plays where you can edit with it much quicker. If these were the only two shotguns in the meta, regardless of which one you picked up, you would have a powerful shotgun in your hands instead of current metas when you could have a green or gray tactical shotgun and the opponent could have a purple or gold pump. There's a huge disparity in terms of top end damage there, but with a charge pump, there's always a much closer gap. Now, for submachine guns to assist you with that shotgun, I would just say take the regular submachine gun. Don't need to have the silenced. I think the silence is pretty poor and no one really wants to run that in a meta. However, I would make the submachine gun only go up to blue. I really don't think there's any need to have a purple or gold submachine gun, the P90 equivalent in the game. I think it just rips too much. And honestly, if you want to take submachine guns, blue is really, really good still. And most importantly, it's not frustrating to play against. If you get hit by a lot of damage, you need something to heal with. So what do I think is the perfect balance? Well, if we add too many items here, you run the risk of diluting the loot pool and making it so that you don't actually end up getting the things you want. So on top of the basics, I still think they should be in the meta in terms of minis, bandages, medkits, shield potions, you know, all the fish, all the fruit as well, which is basically what we had this season in season seven. So what do I think we should add on top of that? Well, firstly, I think the chug jug should also be in the game. I don't really understand why that hasn't been. It's been a staple and it's an iconic Fortnite item that hasn't really been in this chapter at all outside of the infinite chug jug variation that was in chapter two, season three. However, to not dilute the loot pool that much, I would suggest that these potentially maybe come from a llama every time you get one of those rather than getting the chug cannon that you got this season. A chug jug would be really, really good. Now for chug cannons, obviously I want them gone. Those things are really, really busted. However, I think it would be really good to actually still have the bandage bazooka back in the game as well. I feel like the bandage bazooka was a really good balance of things you could take for a heal off weapon. The fact that it took two item slots was absolutely perfect. But again, I don't want these filling up the loot pool and getting these out of chests or something that you don't want. So potentially you could get these out of supply drops instead. And that there's a potential alteration to them so that they don't recharge when you're in the zone. So they only start recharging once you're actually in the circle, not if you're getting ticked by zone. This would prevent things from happening, like the heal off situation that ends up happening in Orchard or the Cree strat, as it's mentioned. So this would be a little nerf to that, which I think would be a good addition. Plus, it would stop people obviously just sitting in zone the whole time with the bandage bazooka. 
So we've not really added anything in terms of floor loot yet, but the only thing I would add on terms of floor loot would be the chug splashes as well. I'm a big fan of chug splashes and I think they fit the meta very, very well. They take up an inventory slot. They're not infinite like the chug cannon was. So fire back in some chug splashes. They're so good when it comes to team modes. All right, so what about pistols though? I think two pistols fit the meta the best. Firstly, the suppressed pistol. I think this fits a lot better than the regular pistol just because it has a little bit more viability outside of just having when you've got a gray one. Some people might actually want to pick this up if they can't find anything else and they need to use that mini ammo because it has such good first shot accuracy resetting at the same time. Particular in higher level games, if you have really, really scuffed loot, you can still get some good storm surge tags with a suppressed pistol over a regular pistol. The other one that I would like to use is the flintlock. The flintlock is such a good and balanced item to have within the game, in particular for things like solo rotations and given the fact that you take fall damage from it too, there's a ton of viability to this item given it also takes up an inventory slot. It fills up that utility slot as well, so less people will probably take snipers and it uses sniper ammo, so less people will be able to sit and just spray with their snipes hiding behind peaks the whole time. So talking about snipers, what do I think the snipe should be? Do I think there should be no snipers? No, I actually do believe that there should be snipers within the game. I think it's an integral part of the majority of shooter games. However, I think Fortnite snipers are way too easy to use. So I suggest one of two things. Firstly, they only have hunting rifles and they're relatively rare, so potentially only in purple and gold variants to prevent every team having one or two snipers within the game. That or they just have regular bolt snipers and they revert the bullet drop off to the way it used to be in early chapter one where it was much more difficult to use. Now I don't see them ever really doing that so only hunting rifles is probably the way I want to keep it. Explosives, none. Uh, but what about the always debated question, which mobility should be in the game? Firstly, I think launch pads makes things way too easy, in particular for taking height, and it just makes height messy and difficult to hold. So I don't think they should be in. But what should be in the game, in my opinion? Well, when it comes to mobility, they always should have some form of risk or trade-off for them. When it comes to launch pads, there's no trade-off to picking them up. So the first one I would like to see is the inflatable kept. This takes up an inventory slot. It's only for you. And obviously, if you get shot out of the air, which only takes a single bullet of any weapon, you'll take fall damage from this. Similarly, I'd like to see shockwaves only if they don't break builds or impulses if they don't give you fall damage. Very, very similarly, this is a form of mobility that takes up an item slot within your inventory. So there's a trade off to picking it up to give you that mobility side. And I also mentioned the flintlock earlier. Similar thing, you have to take up an inventory slot for this. So there's a trade off for picking up this form of mobility. Now, I'd also have bouncers in the trap slot as the only trap item. And the trade off from these is the fact that you fly slowly. And if you remember back to the seasons that had bouncers in them, when players used these, they were very, very frequently beamed out the sky if you're rotating an endgame. So there's a trade off to having bouncers in, and they're a very balanced form of mobility. So overall, inflatable, shockwaves if they don't break builds, or impulses if they don't give you fall damage, the flintlock pistol, and bouncers would be such a good balanced mobility, in my opinion. And finally, the miscellaneous items. What do I want in the game? Harpoon has been sorely missed this last season. I'm a big fan of the Harpoon. I like how it plays in endgame. I like how the fact that it fills again that utility slot that potentially means less snipers in the match as well. So a very big fan of the Harpoon and the way you can get more materials with it. And also, without Harpoon in the meta, we figured out that fishing is basically useless as well. In competitive, there's barely any teams who were able to fish from their drop spots because it took so long to fish. They just didn't. They just ended up focusing on their rotate. So the Harpoon back in it, it creates a lot more availability in playstyles in early game and in the end game. And finally, the shield bubble, my favorite item of all time that was only in in season X. If you remember, you could throw it on cars, you could throw it basically anywhere and it stopped shots being able to come through. It seemed like a little bit of a ripoff of the Halo 3 bubble shield. But anyway, this was an amazing item. I vividly remember a scrim that we played where we were on opposing heights at fifth zone. It pulled the other way. So we threw it on launch, padded on them and took height from that. There's so many good plays that you can make with the shield bubble at the same time. And it can prevent you being focused. Plus, it takes up another inventory slot too. The shield bubble is the most balanced item in the game. I'm going to do a full video on it in the future because it was just amazing. So that's my perfect meta. Let me know if you agree or disagree. New seasons. Don't forget to use code Resub in the item shop if you buy the battle pass. Peace.